Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Good morning as we come together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this, the Lord's Day. Uh, please make note of the announcements that are there in your bulletin, the, your opportunities to give. Um, a reminder, we do have youth, all youth, uh, middle school, high school. You know, a little older, you still want to show up, that's fine. Uh, uh, we'll, we will be meeting downstairs from 5 to 6 tonight uh, and next week as well. Uh, pretty much every Sunday from 5 to 6, we have youth. It's a wonderful time. Uh, as you may notice, uh, Amelia is passing around some clipboards because it's a great way to guilt people into doing stuff. So look at the clipboards. See the empty spaces. Think, oh, man, I could help in this way. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it for a couple weeks. So if, if, you're not, if you're not sure you want to do it this week, it'll show up another week. And, and, and we'll, have, we'll have a wonderful opportunity for all of us to serve. We do have some wonderful, wonderful things planned as we continue on through our year, especially when we get into the fall as Sunday school comes back, as we have opportunities again for fellowship time. Uh, uh, so there, there are just great, wonderful opportunities to serve each other and the church. So think about it, pray about it, uh, and, and let's fill that out. And, you know, many hands make light work. Are there other uh, announcements this morning? We are uh, glad to have the festival coming back. Uh, that will start uh, Thursday, I believe. Um, so, so next week, I'll be elevated even higher uh, uh, up here. Uh, hopefully, I'll figure out how to, how to work myself on the platform uh, for the first time. But it is nice to have that opportunity for beautiful music back in our community and in our church again. I mean, I'm sorry, we always have beautiful music in our church. But extra, extra beautiful music uh, uh, with, with the festival uh, coming back in. But now let us quiet the world around us. Let us put our hearts, our minds on things above as we begin our worship with the music of our prelude.
Is it on now? Oh, good, sorry. Uh, Listen for the word of the Lord, Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, You answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Thanks be to God. Please join me. Oh, I'm going to read the call to reconciliation, and then you can all join me. Let us turn to the Most Holy One and confess our sin, confident in God's faithfulness and steadfast love. Holy One, pathos we come to church on Sundays. We too often live the rest of the week as though you do not exist. We act as though we created ourselves with no connection to you, with no hope of transcendence. Open us to your constant presence, Holy One. Teach us to pray, restore our sight, that we may commune with you each day in light of eternity. Let us take a moment for our own silent confession. Amen. Through the glory and wonder of prayer, we have a connection to the divine. In this, the Lord hears our words and responds with love. Know that you are God's forgiven child, blessed and loved for all of eternity. Be at peace. Amen.
Since God has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. Let us welcome each other with the peace of Jesus Christ, saying the peace of Christ be with you. And also. The epistle lesson this morning is from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 15 and 16 to 19. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him 
The whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. Thanks be to God for the word of God. Thank you, that was really lovely. The Old Testament lesson today is taken from Genesis 18, verses 20 to 32. Then the Lord said, how great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all altoge- done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? 
Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, if I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I, who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? Then he said, I will not destroy it if I had find 45 there. Again, he spoke to him. Suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we gather before you in prayer. We call out your name knowing you hear our voice, for you above all are holy. We pray for your will to become our own. Lord, please feed us with your word. Let us see past the obstacles we place before you and our neighbor. Deliver us from ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In our first reading, Abraham is bargaining with God, petitioning the visitors who came with the news of the impending doom of Sodom and Gomorrah. And as I like to always say, when when Sodom and Gomorrah comes up uh, out of the words out of my mouth, Reminder, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was in hospitality. They were not hospitable people. They did not care for outsiders. Uh, and and they were uh, wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, good to always remember. Uh, today, our gospel reading tells us of petitioning the Lord. We continue through the gospel of Luke, and our gospel reading begins with that prayer we are all too familiar with. Christ teaching his disciples and us how to pray. We're given this prayer that we recite every week, saying it in unison as long as we've attended church. So today we will learn the Lord's Prayer once again and focus on what the words say as they are found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, he said to one of his disciples, One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed is your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins or our debts or our trespasses, whichever you feel most comfortable, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Then Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you that even though he will not get up and give you anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. If your child If if there's anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, gives them a snake instead of a fish, or if a child asks for an egg, will give them a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, This is the institution of the Lord's Prayer. And I wonder how often, and and I wonder about the effectiveness of corporate prayer sometimes. You know, those prayers that we say aloud together. Do we pay attention to those words that we're saying, or are we just trying to make sure we pronounce them and say them in time? Uh, I mean, some we have have chants for, because we know all too well, and there's that certain cadence. And if we do go to possibly a different church, we get really tripped up, or we pause for a second. When we get to that, you know, are they going to say debts? Are they going to say sins? Are they going to say trespasses? Are they going to stop at a certain point and I'm going to be the only one still talking uh, uh, if we go to church up the hill? Um, In seminary, I was given this challenge to to say the Lord's prayer differently. Not to change the words, but to change how I said it. I remember our our professor, uh, she said to us, "Try, try saying it with a smile. I mean, no one's going to see it, but if you're actively smiling, you know, like when you're talking to, to somebody in a happy voice, it, it changes the tone of your voice. So later in the service, when we say the Lord's Prayer, I extend this challenge to you. Smile when you say it. My eyes will be closed. I, I don't know. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to check. But see if there's anything different. If we have that idea of joy in our face when we say it. I say this because I wonder if we are really praying the prayer that we're taught. Or is it just words that we say? Do we really expect God to do those things that we're asking God to do? Let us look at that prayer that we've been taught. First, we call out to God, and Jesus says, you know, know, this is God, this is Abba, this is Father. And that's to set up the rest. It's not some faceless, distant deity, but it's our parent. The one that cares about what we ask for. The one that will listen to our plea. It also sets up this place in prayer. We are the children. We are the children of God, cared for, beloved, and also created. Never forget that. That you are God's beloved. So we acknowledge this special, beautiful, hallowed relationship. We recognize the kingdom, that we are disciples of Christ, that have seen this kingdom break into our world. In the manner of Jesus Christ. And we wait, we wait for the day of the Lord, a day of fulfillment, a day that the kingdom comes. And if we want to do some more study on the day of the Lord, wait for it at your own peril or risk. Uh, uh, The ideas of justice uh, may not be what we're thinking of. But we're asking for that time when the prayers are answered. And revealed. And then it begins or continues with three petitions. One for sustenance. Dear Lord, give us our daily bread. We pray for God to provide our needs. And then we pray for our relationships. <clears throat> to forgive us our sins, our debts, our trespasses. We ask for a repairing of that relationship with God. And then maybe that part that we say really quickly or we stumble to or we live up to the least. That we forgive our debtors, those who have trespassed against us, those who have sinned against us. We ask for God to repair our relationship with each other. And then that final petition, to deliver us from evil, to save us from the time of trial. A prayer that the world needs so much today. Because Lord knows. 
we are in times of trial and that there's evil in the world that we need to be delivered from. <coughs> Christ then gives us examples of calling out for something after he finishes his prayer, telling us that God is most certainly going to do better than us flawed humans. Thank the Lord. When Jesus speaks the parable about a man looking for bread from his neighbor, it gives us deeper insight on being taught to pray. I'd like to go back to verse eight for a moment. The man comes to his friend's house and he's knocking at the door and at first he's rejected. And then we have verse eight. <clears throat> I tell you that though he will not get up and give anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give whatever he needs. Normally, I don't get too deep into the translations, but there's something to take note of here. When Christ talks about persistence, this could better be translated as probably being shameless. We're told not just to be persistent in our prayers, but we're to be shameless in our prayers. Don't hold anything back from God, for God will surely answer with love and with peace. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Because God's not gonna hold anything back. Now, I would love to be able to leave the sermon here and tell you that our prayer without shame, to pray without ceasing, to ask, to seek, to knock, and God will answer those prayers. But that leaves that elephant in the room when we speak of prayer. You know, those prayers that we don't see answered or that are answered no or that are not answered in the way that we want to or certainly not on our timing. And even though there, there seems as if there's no way that God, who is all powerful and all good and loves us with a greater love and a more perfect love that we know between a parent and a child, that there's no way, that there's no explanation that we would ever be ignored or told no. I'm talking about those prayers that we make for loved ones that have been diagnosed with terminal illnesses. When we pray for those miracles and our loved one still slips away from us, those prayers that a mother makes at the bedside of her child who's frail and injured, hooked up to tubes and wires, praying without ceasing, The prayers that we make for our world for peace. And still we have war. More people are shot and put in harm's way. Innocents die. How do we deal with those issues in prayer? Those times when prayer doesn't seem like it works. It can cause a crisis of faith. We can think that maybe God didn't answer because my faith's not good enough or that I didn't pray the right way or God just doesn't care. One commentator I, I read spoke about evil has power in the world, yes. And until God's kingdom comes fully in all of its glory and every knee bows and every tongue confesses Christ and the battle is won, we will have suffering. We'll have pain and death. And there's probably more truth there than I would like to admit. So where does that leave us? For me, with more questions than answers. I've studied the Bible. I've studied it in Greek. I've studied it in Hebrew. 
I have taken classes to read about prayer, about the nature of sin, on why bad things happen to good people, and why prayer matters. I've studied the debates for and against the existence of God and the nature of God and about God being all good and all knowing, you know, trying to be a good Calvinist. About God's providence and predestination and all those things that have changed over the centuries and came back to where it started. And my family, I would love to tell you that I have all the answers, but I don't. And I don't think anybody does. We're human. We have our limits. Maybe that's why we start off with saying that we're praying to our Father and we're realizing that we're children. Because sometimes when we realize or think about those times when we're a child and we think that we know it all, as we grow up, we realize that we didn't, that there were things there that we didn't understand, ways that weren't going to be played out the way we really really, really wanted them to. What I do know, I believe that God is there. In the prayers that are answered and the miracles we witness, I believe God in them. And God's also there in those unanswered prayers. In those times of pain, those times of loss, those times of suffering. God joins us there too. With all that I don't know and I, under, and I don't understand about prayer, there are a few things that I do know that I want to share with you. First, God wants us to pray. God desires a relationship with us. God wants us to reach out. God wants us to be persistent in this prayer and wants us to be shameless to ask for anything, to not hold back any part of our life, to not hold back any of our desires from God. So we pray and we give thanks and we pray and we have a conversation with God and we pray and we question God. Going back to our Old Testament reading, like Abraham did, we pray and we ask again and again and we bargain and we don't hold anything back and we argue and we lament. We've stopped doing that. We either give up way too easy or we think that there's no point in arguing. Our Bible, there's a big chunk of it, a big, big chunk of it about arguing with God, about having a good argument. And, and, and a good argument, I think we've lost even in society. A good argument is when you love and you respect somebody enough that you're willing to be vulnerable and say, this is what I believe and this is what I hold to be true and I want you and I love you and I care enough for you that I want you to join me in this. And it's not just, this is what's best for me. And if you don't agree with me, you have no part of me. Because we've really enjoyed that place, at least it seems like, for far too long. But we have to get back to that nature of a good and petitioned argument. Even a bargain. And a lament. To say to God, please. And to say to our neighbor, please, let's see if we can't do better. All of this can be part of our prayer life. And if we don't hold anything back, if we become shameless in our praying, we pray because we realize that we are completely dependent on God's mercy, God's grace, and God's love. And if we realize that's what we're dependent on, we can realize that it's greater than everything else we can find in the world. God listens. God listens to our prayers. We may not see, we may not understand, we may not agree, or even recognize the response. But that doesn't mean that God's not listening. Imagine God at the end of the day saying, you know what? 
was really great to hear from my child today. Really glad they called. How many grandparents or parents out there of grown children can think about that? How often are we reciprocating that relationship with our creator? Just to say, hey, I love you. I care for you. Here's what happened in my day today. Maybe take a few moments of silence to reflect and see what we can do better. God is listening. God hears our cries. God hears our shouts for joy, our pleas for help. That's why God came to us in Christ, to show us that God is listening, that the kingdom is here and still to come. That's why Christ died for us, to show us that God will experience everything and anything for us to know that we are loved. So this is why we pray. This is why we care. This is why we worship. Because we are God's beloved child. Amen. Our hymn of response today is Our Father Which Art in Heaven. Number 464 in your hymnal. And we will sing both parts too today. Please be seated. We come to that moment in our church service where we lift up our thoughts, our prayers, and we give them to God. Uh, please make note of those concerns that are there lift, listed in your bulletin. Are there those to be lifted up today? <coughs> I can cry here. Um, please... Uh, Remember the Doherty family this week. John Doherty, my son's age, 32, passed away this week. And so I ask you all to think of the Doherty family and say your prayers. <laughs> he was my son's best friend. <laughs> prayers for the Doherty family and life lost too soon. Either of those, oh, for Amelia. Um, my uncle, my dad's sister's husband, is really sick, and a year ago, they said, like, six months, and then six months after that, we're here now, and the guy's really sick, and 
Um, they don't have a definitive point. It could be days or weeks, but it sucks. So we're talking about that for prayers and stuff. Pray, prayers for your uncle. Are there others? Uh, prayers for uh, Pastor Becky across the street. Uh, Pastor Becky has uh, uh, contracted COVID. Uh, her husband had it uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, prayers for a full and complete recovery. Uh, prayers for my father, uh, who has COVID as well. Uh, has been kind of ill, but is, uh, you know, vaccinated and boosted and, and taking Paxlovid. Uh, so, you know, uh, good things that we can do. Prayers for our president, who, who's doing the same thing. Uh, uh, prayers for my mom, who, who's just caring for my dad, not the president. Uh, 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 as, as, you know, she stays healthy. And uh, uh, prayers for my, my dad's dad, my, my Grandpa Leonard, uh, who I have my middle name from. Uh, Grandpa Leonard is going to be 89 in September, uh, and his, uh, his health is deteriorating uh, for about the fifth or sixth time in the past five years. So uh, uh, he may bounce right back. Uh, he may not, but uh, uh, prayers for my grandpa Leonard and the rest of my family. Are there any others this morning? Let us pray. God of wonder, God of grace, God of beauty. We come to you first and we give thanks. We give thanks for this beautiful world around us, for this place that you have placed us in. And Lord, empower us to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, we also ask that you're with all those who on this creation are dealing with extreme issues of heat, that they find places to keep cool, that they find water to drink, that they find ways to survive. And most certainly, Lord, that they find neighbors to care for them. Lord, we also ask for rain, rain for the crops, rain for the lake, uh, for, for all those who, who enjoy uh, the waters around us, or let them fall from the heavens. Lord, for your beings that exist in creation, we ask for comfort and peace. For those who are dealing with illness, we ask for healing and recovery. As we are reminded all too often that the pandemic continues, we ask for wisdom, we ask for peace, we ask for patience and understanding that we care for ourselves and most certainly we care for our neighbors. Lord, we give thanks for the wonderful health care that we have in our country and our world. We give thanks for the work that the people that we call doctors and nurses and aides and helpers and our custodians and our hospitals those who clean every day, those who make the places safe for us. Lord, we give thanks for the work that they have done. We ask that we relieve their burdens, for Lord, we know they have been tired for far too long. So let us do what we can to care once again for one another. Lord, we ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we find comfort and peace in life and in death knowing that through each moment, through all of eternity, you are with us. And let us pray. Let us pray with belief and joy and a smile as we have been taught by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please hear this call for our offering. Jesus teaches us that if we ask, it will be given to us. Let us participate in God's purpose then by giving generously for all who are in need.
please join me in our prayer of dedication. Holy One, we give you thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Bless these offerings and transform them into your gifts of hospitality for those who need them most. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 465. What a friend we have in Jesus. Go into God's world remembering to ask the Lord for all that you need in prayer. For God looks upon you with love and may the face of God shine upon you. May you know the greatest thing in the world, the love of Jesus Christ. May you be connected one to another through God's perfect Holy Spirit. Amen.